All right, this is Brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the Great Millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Uh, today's video is going to be entitled Spring Cleaning is Upon Us. And uh, I was inspired to do this lesson because, as we all know, New Year's just passed, you know, the actual holiday. And, you know, it's a lot of people out there that believe that we are in a new year. But as we all know, technically, we are still in the same year. This year has not ended yet. Just for the simple fact that the springtime is the beginning of the year when everything is getting ready to be at its peak when everything starts to grow again when everything starts to come back to its, its beauty and everything like that that's when the beginning of the year starts okay the year doesn't start well while everything is dead man you know all the, the you know certain anim animals hibernate and everything like that and then you know all the plants and trees and everything they don't grow forth leaves and they don't bud or anything like that okay but i want to go into this word spring spiritually and the reason why I say spring cleaning is upon us is because Yahweh Shai is getting ready to come back and bring forth a new life, which is the kingdom of heaven. And the way that he's going to bring in that new life is, he, is he's going to help destroy Babylon the Great, which is America and the scriptures. OK. And the thing is, you got to think about it, man, when uh, people do spring cleaning in their houses and everything like that, pretty much. All of the filth and all of the, the, the hoarding of, of Christmas gifts or hoarding of whatever it is that they had during the wintertime, you know, when it's spring cleaning, man, they trying to get their houses ready for the summertime and for the rest of the year and everything like that. And for the spring as well. They're trying to make it as fresh as possible because, you know, when it's springtime, you know, it's, that's the time around. It's the freshest air. Everything is just beautiful. Everything is, you know, getting ready to be at its peak, you know, okay? And so I'm just like, I thought of it spiritually as far as this word spring. I'm like, man, spring cleaning is upon us, man. Because Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai is the beginning and the end, man. And he's about to end this world so a new beginning can come. Just like it says in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right. So spiritually thinking, what is spring cleaning for us? Spring cleaning is getting rid of this place. Okay? It's getting rid of this place. You know, that's one of the ways that he's gonna cleanse the earth of its filth. It is by fire. Okay? When you uh get gold and silver and everything like that and you refine it, the way that you do it is you melt it. Okay? You melt it. And how do you melt it? With with heat, with fire. You melt it so then it can be refined, it can get back to its pure state again. Okay, you can get it back to its richest state, so to speak. All right. So first, you know, I'm going to go into some definitions of this word spring. Now, I ran across this definition right here, of course. I'm going to read this one first. Uh, number 37. It says, the season between winter and summer in the northern hemisphere from the vernal equinox to the summer solstice. And the southern hemisphere from the autumnal equinox to the winter solstice. All right. Then 38, it says, in temperate zones, the season of the year following winter and characterized by the budding of trees, growth of plants, the onset of warmer weather, etc. Then you read this definition 39. It says the first stage and freshest period. We're coming into that time, man. We're coming into the time where our kingdom will be the first stage and it will be the freshest period. Why? Because it's the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> it's the kingdom of heaven and it's going to be here on earth. Okay, the most high, yeah, how about Shim Yahweh Shah is getting ready to clean this place out, man. He's getting ready to clean this place out and he's getting ready to have something even better grow after this, man. Which is, you know, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that's part of the elect. You are the Israelites, according to the scriptures. Okay, you are the Israelites, and he's getting ready to put you all in rulership. And this new stage that we're coming into will be the freshest, man. This is going to be the greatest kingdom and the greatest period of life we have ever seen. Okay. So let me um 
go to a couple of the definitions that I found and, you know, I wanted to uh, connect it with scriptures. All right. So I'm going to some definitions as far as the verb spring. OK. So first uh, we're going to. Uh, let's see which one. Yeah, here. Here it is. Number four. It says to come into being to come into being rise or rise within a short time. What scripture do you think about when you, when you hear that, man? To come into being, rise or rise within a short time. And like I said, remember, this is spring cleaning. And how is Yahweh by Shin Yahweh Shah going to clean this place up by thermonuclear destruction and by the death of a, of a lot of you Israelites out there and by the death of these heathens, man? Because especially you Israelites, because your blood have to be shed in order for you to even get into the kingdom. That's only if you're not right with Yahweh by Shin Yahweh Shah on the first go around. All right. So, like I said, this is one of the ways that it's going to happen. The most is get ready to bring great plagues and great death upon this place. All right. Revelation 12 and 12. It says, therefore, rejoice, ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but the short time. So within this short time, man, Yahweh Shem Yahweh is going to put the spirit upon Esau so he can pretty much get in full devil form, <laughs> full devil mode. And he's going to bring great wrath upon you two thirds, man, and upon his own people and any other nation at that for that matter. OK, this is one of the ways that, you know, Yahweh Shem Yahweh is going to help clean this place up. He got to get rid of the wicked, man. None of the, the wicked cannot come into the kingdom of heaven. Point blank, period. The only way the wicked is coming to the kingdom of heaven is through slavery, man. And that's it. When Esau gets rounded up and shackled up and everything like that, after the World War Three is over, after everything settles, he's going to get rounded up. OK, and then after that, that's the only way he's coming to the kingdom of heaven is through slavery. But other than that, as far as you Israelites go, you can't come into the kingdom wicked, man. You can't just do Whatever you wanted to do right now and then expect salvation when this place gets ready to crumble, man. Okay? The only way that you can be saved is you have to come back to the your your heritage, man. You have to come back to who you really are. You are an Israelite. You're not a byword. Meaning, you're not a nigga. You're not a spig. You're not a Mexican. You're not a redskin. So forth and so on, man. Okay? You are a Judite, Benjaminite, Levite, Issacharite, Zebulonite, so forth and so on, man. Gadite, all right? All of those, man. But to get to back to the point, it says, For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but the short time. And like I said, this is one of the ways that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah is going to clean this place up through death, man. That's one definition right there, man. Okay. Now, let's go back to it. Because it was another one that I found. Okay. Because when you go into the springtime, right, that's when we read the definition earlier, we read springtime is about being butted up, you know, growth. How, what comes from that? You know, where did that start? It starts with the seed, correct? So let's read the fifth one. It says to come into being by growth as from a seed or germ, bulb, root, etc. Grow as plants. Okay, so. When we think about the springtime, we think about spring, man. This is the time where everything begins to grow and it comes from a certain seed. How is life going to uh, grow? How is it going to prosper? How is it going to continue? How is not continue, but how is it going to get to the point where it's going to be in its freshest state? It's going to start with the elect, man. It's going to start with the elect from the seed of David, man. Okay, let's get Matthew. Let's get Matthew. Let's get Matthew 13 and 18. And we're going to read down to 32, okay? I'm going to try to read it quick. It says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it is not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he, yet have he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seeing among the thorns is he that heareth the word, 
and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. See, these seeds that we're talking about right now are the seed that's not going to make it, man. You got certain brothers in here that receive the truth and everything like that. But then after a while, man, they fell off for whatever personal reason. Or, you know, you got certain Israelites out there that come across the truth, but they can't come into it, man. Just for the simple fact of riches, simple fact of the pleasures of this world. Okay, so they're not going to come into this, man. They're not going to be fruitful. All right. Verse 23, it says, but he that receives, receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some in hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. This is going to be the elect, man. The ones that, that, that the, the seed that is upon good ground and heareth the word and understandeth it and do this word as well. Because the scriptures does say you can't just be a hearer only. You have to be a hearer and a doer of the word. Okay. This is the good seed that's going to bring forth the hundredfold, sixty and thirty. Okay. The good seed are going to bring forth the elect. That seed is going to help start and raise up the kingdom of heaven, man spring cleaning man okay so the good seed is going to begin okay they're going to be the beginning man they're going to be the ones to start off the kingdom of heaven all right verse 24 another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? For whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Were thou then, were thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you you ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat unto my barn. Now, this parable is speaking about, um, you know, the, the heathen nations that look like Israelites. Those are the tares, man. The heathen nations that look like Israelites, they are they represent the tares, okay. And then a lot of you Israelites as well, man, you might as well be tares too. Because you are pretty much, you know, you're stuck to the ways of this life. You're stuck to the customs of America and everything like that. And you just want to continue to be wicked. So you're going to be be considered a terror as well, man. Okay? When you look up, when you Google the word terror and wheat, both of them are very similar. They look just alike, man. Okay? The wheat are the, you know, the wheat are the Israelites. Those are the ones that's going to be saved, man, you know. Like scriptures say, Israelite is like a speckled bird. You got a lot of Israelites out there that look like other nations, but they're Israelites according to the to the blood, man, according to the spirit. All right. So the tares are going to be burned, man. Like I said, one of the ways that's going that, you know, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is going to clean this place up, man. He have to burn the wicked. The tares represent the wicked, whether you're a... Uh, 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 a heathen nation that look like an Israelite or you an Israelite that just want to continue to be wicked. Like I said, you consider the tear, man. All right. You got to be burned, man. You know, you're not the part of the uh, process. You're not building up the process, man. You're not building up the house of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. You're holding us back from blessings. Like Apostle Tahar always says, man, you know, here it is that we know who we are. We know who we're supposed to be. We know what way we're supposed to live. And Jake doesn't want to acknowledge that. So you holding us back from blessings, man. That's why a lot of you are going to have to pay for your sins through a brutal um, death, man. A brutal death. You have to feel you don't have to feel that pain, man, especially you Israelites out there that take this chip. If you take this chip, man, you you into the fire. That, that's your destiny, period. How about Shem Yahweh Shah is going to reserve you so you could be in that fire and that fire is going to be hot, man. Hi, you got to remember the, those flames are going to reach up into the skies. That's how tall the fire is going to be throughout this whole country, man. This whole country. When those nuclear missiles hit over here, the, the flames are going to reach up to the skies, man. All right. It's going to be so high to the point where you're going to need those chariots to beam you up out of here because even an airplane can't save you from the from the fire that's coming, man. All right. 
So you have to be like that, man. You have to get into that mindset. We got to be like, look, I got to get up out of here because the Lord is about to clean this place up, man. He's about to clean this place up. And one of the main ways he's going to do it is by fire, man. By fire. Let's get Baruch. We going to get Baruch. Two and thirty. Hold on, let me go back. Let me go back to it. I have to change the okay. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff necked people, but in the land of their captivity they shall remember themselves. And that's what we're doing right now. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is turning his face back toward us again. He's not forgetting us because we're in the last days. You know, he to turn his back on us for a very long time. And now he's getting ready to remember us again. Why? Because he made a promise unto us. Okay? And he's a man of his word. He's not going to forget us, man. He was just going to allow us to serve this captivity only for a certain amount of time. And then he was going to give us the blessing after the fact. Okay? So we're remembering ourselves right there, right now within our captivities. We're remembering that we are Israelites and we are only going to live in this hell hole for only so long, man. It's getting ready to be a done deal. All right? Verse 31, and it says, And it shall know that I am the Lord their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck, and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power, and they shall be my people, and I will no more drive my people out of the land that I have given them. Okay? So this is what we're coming into. This is what we're coming into. And uh, I wanted to uh, get this scripture because of this definition right here, which I should have read it first. Like <laughs> I should have read this definition first. But you read number six right here. It says to proceed or originate from a specific source or cause. How are you going to proceed or what's going to be the procedure and how what's going to be originated from a specific source or cause dealing with Israel, man? Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah is going to bring us back to our heritage and he's going to give us back the, our laws. We're going to be perfect within the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, when you go back to something that's originated, you have to go back to the beginning. So let's read it again. Let's read it again. Okay. It says in verse 34, it says, I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them and they shall not be the menace. This is the origination of our people, man. Started with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the chosen seed, man. That is the chosen seed, okay? So, and, and as you know, in order for us to proceed with getting into the kingdom of heaven, we have to come back to our heritage. And this is what the Most High is going to do with us, man. It says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. This is what's coming, man. This is what's coming. <laughs> You know, so many definitions, you know, that I was reading last night when it came to that word spring, man. Spring is the beginning. Spring is the freshest. Spring is the, the, the best of the best, man. You know, that's why a lot of people choose spring as their favorite time of the year because that's when everything is beautiful. And that's what we're coming into, man. We come into the most beautiful time of, of ever, ever, man. All right. Let's get Ezekiel. I'm bringing this out. Uh. In my previous video for Ezekiel, but um, I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, you might as well, you know, bring it out again, man. Bring it out again. This is uh, Ezekiel 36 and 22. It says, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord power, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whither you went. And I was sanctifying my great name. Which are profane among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, sent the Lord power, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Alright, so you know, this is one of the reasons why 
we're about to see these miracles and everything like that because even Esau and these other heathen nations and even our own people do not believe in Yahweh by Shem and Yahweh Shai. The only ones that truly believe that Yahweh by Shem and Yahweh Shai exists are the elect and the elites of this world, okay? And you know, you, you might have certain other men out there, a part of these other heathen nations that know that Yahweh by Shem and Yahweh Shai is real. But other than that, man, this whole world look at, looks at us as fools. Like the scriptures say that we would be. Okay, the scripture said we will be accounted as fools for this word. Okay, we bring out this word, man. People just do not believe it, man. People don't believe that a, a, a God is about to come out of the sky on a UFO and help destroy this place. They think that the Lord is getting ready to come on a white horse. He's going to look completely opposite from the way that we bring him out to be. And he's just going to save everybody and everything is going to be in peace. Everybody's just going to be saved together when the scriptures say otherwise, man. The Most High is getting ready to show himself. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is getting ready to exalt his, himself upon this whole world, man. And people are going to see it. And when they see Yahweh Shai come back, man, they're going to be afraid, man. Everybody is going to be trembling within that day, man. And that's when the whole world will know that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is real. Okay? But we get back to this, verse 24. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen. And gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Here it is. 25. Like I said. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your filthiness. All your filthiness. And from your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an, give you an heart of flesh. Okay. So this is another way that Yahweh by Shem and Yahweh Shai is getting ready to clean this place up. Like I said, he's going to clean this place up by getting rid of the two-thirds and these other heathen nations. Okay? But with the elect, he's going to clean us up. If we, Yahweh, Yahweh Ratazah, we are part of the elect. And one of the ways he's going to clean us up, you know, he's going to change our bodies. Okay? He's going to give us a new heart. He's going to give us the, a new body. He's going to give us a new mind. All right? We're going to have the commandments, statutes, and laws written in our inward parts so we can never go off again. Okay? And he's going to clean this place up because he's going to burn all of these idols. Okay? He's going to get rid of all these people that's continually eating abominable foods, still calling on the names of Jesus and God, calling on Allah or whatever religion that you believe in. He's getting ready to get, get rid of all of these, 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 these idols, man, these false gods out here, man. He's about to show himself. Yahweh how about Shimmy Yahweh Shai is getting ready to show himself that he is, and he is only, okay? There's no other power out there that can top him, man. And that's our power. And that's the thing that really I don't be understanding sometimes why Jake don't want to come into this thing. The power that created everything that you see, everything that you live, everything that you experience on an everyday basis is here for you. For you, we're getting ready to come into a life where he's created everything for you. The kingdom is prepared already, man, for the past 2,000 years. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah has been preparing this kingdom for us, man. And y'all don't want to come into it? You want to stay a part of his world and act like there's nothing else to, to look forward to. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, because guess what? He's going to clean your ass up with that nuclear destruction, man. <laughs> He's going to clean you up, man, while burning you and having you melt and, and leaving you over here to be dust, man. All right? But us, man, we looking for the kingdom, man. We looking to be cleansed from our filthiness. We're looking to be cleansed from our sins, man. Because as soon as we realize we're part of the elect, man, this whole body of ours, man, this whole mind state of ours is going to be gone. It's going to be a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. I'm going to get one more scripture, man. We're going to get Revelation 18 and 4. And it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plague. See, and this is what I was just saying. You need to come out of this world, man. Come out of this world, man. Don't be partakers of her sins. Don't be part. Don't receive not of her plagues. It ain't that. Come on, man. Eating pork and celebrating holidays and doing other abominable, abominable things that can get you destroyed, man. It's not worth it. It's not worth it, man. Come out of her. Who is her? Babylon. Come out of Babylon the great, man. Coming out of, come out of this wicked kingdom and come back to righteousness, man. Live free. 
Be happy that you're an Israelite, man. Stop being a part of this world. This world has nothing to offer. All right. Verse five. It says, "For her sins have reached to heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities." The Most Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is remembering the iniquities, man. The sins have reached up into the heavens, man. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is looking down on this place, like, man, I can't. Especially Yahweh Shai. He like, man, I can't wait until the Most High give me the okay to destroy this place, man. I can't wait to show myself because this place got to go. It got to go. It's too much going on. Verse 6, it says, reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. Okay, this is what's going to happen to these Edomites, man. These Edomites specifically. Everything that they have done unto the children of Israel, man, they're going to receive double, man. I don't even got to go into go into that, man. We already know a lot of the history that these, these Edomites that have done unto us, man. It's a done deal. They're going to receive everything double, man. Their future is not going to be great at all. <laughs> it's, it's just going to be straight up horrible, for real. <laughs> Verse 7. It says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no win widow and shall see no sorrow, man. That's how much pride they have, man. They think they cannot be touched. They think that they cannot be thrown down. But like it says in Malachi, man, you will build, but I will throw down, man. You how about you how about Yahweh Shah is getting ready to show himself, man. But this is the ultimate way right here. Like I said, that he's going to get ready to clean this place up. Verse 8. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day. What's one way he's going to clean it up? Death. Like I was speaking about earlier, a lot of you two-thirds going to have to receive these painful deaths, man, because you didn't want to come back to the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Mourning. A lot of people are going to be mourning. A lot of people are going to be out here starving to death, feeling the pain, feeling sad and everything like that. And once they realize that the things that the prophets were out here warning you about, now you're actually living it and it's nothing you can do to be saved out of it. Only thing you can do is just go through it, man. You just got to go through it and hey, you better hope it don't last long. But according to... <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. The most I've been giving out these warnings for a long time. So, <laughs> anyway, and famine. And what I was just saying, man, famine. There's not going to be any food or water, man. There's going to be food and water out here. Because like the scriptures say, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. My servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Okay. My servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. Okay. So, there's going to be, you know, food and water for his elect. But for the rest of you, man, you're going to have to feel that, man. You're going to have to get to, you're going to get to the point where you're going to be like, man, I haven't found food in, in weeks. Okay. I need to do something, man. I'm dying. I'm dying. Okay. That's what's going to be coming through your mind. You're going to be like, damn, man, I'm dying. And you're going to do whatever it is that you need to do to survive. So what's one of the things you're going to start doing? Eating grass, eating mice. Eating wild animals that come past. You ain't even going to think about the dangers of a wild animal if you see one, man. You're going to really med have it in, in your mind to the point where you're going to be like, nah, look, we finna take this this fox or this possum down or whatever, whatever the case may be, you know. You know, you're going to be like, hey, look, we getting ready to take this down because we need to eat, man. You're going to be eating whatever, man. You're going to be eating humans as well. Cannibalism is coming back, man. Okay. You're going to feel the effects of this famine, man. And we only thing that you're going to think of, you're going to be thinking about surviving. But at the same time, man, hey, these words that we have been telling you will be in your head, man. You're like, damn, I should have did right. Now look at me. I'm over here eating my brother's arm. <laughs> that's how that's how bad it is. That's how bad it's going to get out here, man. But hey, this is one of the ways that this place has to be cleaned up, man. OK, and this is the ultimate way that it's going out right here. Finishing the verse, and it says, "And she shall she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord power who judges her." Okay. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her tor torment, saying, "Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city." For in one hour is thy judgment come. America will be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction 
and all it's going to take is one hour for this whole country to be destroyed okay this country has been built and can and still you know people still over here trying to build upon it right now but this place has been you know established for hundreds of years man hundreds of years okay all of your hundreds of years worth of work man is about to be destroyed within one hour man one hour and that's going to be the ultimate way that you have about shimmy how shot is going to clean this place up by destroying this place with those missiles man okay so this is the time that we're coming into man because like the scriptures say he is uh how about shimmy how shot alpha and omega the beginning and the end man we're coming into the to the end of this society and the beginning of ours that follow with man okay and that's spring <laughs> That's spring, man. Spring cleaning is upon us, man. So I just wanted to bring that out because, uh, like I said, I've just been seeing a lot of posts, you know, about, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, the new year actually starts in the springtime, which is true. Okay. Which is true. And, you know, I was just thinking, I'm just like, yeah, the first thing that I thought about was, you know, a lot of people like to do spring cleaning because they like to make sure their houses and everything are ready for the spring man you know a lot of people you know dig up the weeds and they make sure that everything is set up so then the flowers and everything can grow and everything can just look beautiful but in order for you to receive that beauty in order for things to get to that point you got to clean places up and hey thinking about it spiritually this way how about shim and how shy is going to do to this place he got his own way of cleaning this place up before we come into our springtime so hey like i said like i said in uh in verse 4, come out of her, my people. Don't be partakers of her sins and make sure you don't receive of her plagues, man. Stay spiritual. Stay prayed up. Keep fasting. Do what you need to do for Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So with that, man, I'm going to say call Halayim Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. And you have a right to Zah. I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.